Let's talk about the National Football League playoffs. There's only one game, Tanner Plummer. Absolutely, it is the Bengals and the Chiefs <laughs> at Burrowhead Stadium. Yeah. How about this? Have you guys heard this? The Cincinnati Bengals are renaming Arrowhead Burrowhead because Joe Burrow won there last year. Can he do it again this year? And I think the biggest question in this game is, how healthy is Patty Ice? Is Patrick Mahomes healthy enough on this ankle? There's no way this ankle is is miraculously healed. I got news for you. Having had ankle injuries all throughout my professional career, watching guys deal with them, this was a high ankle sprain. Those things don't go away in four or five days. Patrick Mahomes is going to be impacted by this. I think he is incredibly lucky he didn't break that ankle. I think it is incredible that he is doing the things he's doing. What you're watching on game film is very different than what you're seeing in practice film. I don't care what he looks like hopping off a dais. I don't care what he looks like on the practice field. You can't match the leverage and the power, Jake, that you have to exert on that ankle. I don't think there's any way he's healthy. No, I, I don't think there's any way he's healthy. I think that, you know, Pat is is doing everything he can to rehab it and, and heal from the injury, and I think he's doing a great job. I mean, clearly you know, able to move a lot better than he was. You know, we've seen just a tidbit of their practice film there where they were warming up and stretching, and clearly he's got a little bit, he's gotten a little bit better for sure. So, you know, I think he's going to be a, like a, uh, healthy enough to be effective, healthy enough to at least have a shot to go out there and win the game. And and I and I think the trouble is the deep ball, the, the, the right hash to the left sideline throw, the far throws that require power out of your legs to make he's not going to have that i don't think that's an assumption that's my guess my opinion but that's going to be the real question because if he can't hit the seam route from his side of the 50 yard line that's going to really affect what they do and i thought dan orlovsky you know espn analysts had a great breakdown of their formations and what they like to do and they love to run that bunch set right where you've got three three receivers together, and then they include the running back in that sometimes. And a lot of that creates the up the field, you know, bombs that they're able to get sometimes in games. And my concern is, is he's not going to be able to push off that back leg effectively enough to to hit that, to, to hit that shot. So that's why I say, I, I'm not sure what exactly the game plan would be. But if I'm the Bengals, I'm pressuring Mahomes. I want Mahomes out of the pocket, running to the best of his ability, which we know that he's not going to be able to do. And I want to pressure him. I want to make him uncomfortable. And if they do that, I think they're going to have a lot of success because he's not healthy. Normally, that wouldn't be a recipe for success, but things have changed now that he has the injury. So if I'm the Bengals, I'm doing exactly what I've done all season. Disguise the looks, bring pressure, and hit this guy. And if you're not going to hit him, make him run on that bad ankle. That is is what I think the Bengals need to do defensively to to have the best shot to win this game. Yeah, I don't think there is any way that Patrick Mahomes can can do well enough to carry the Kansas City Chiefs. The the bigger issue though, matchup wise to me anyway, is the way this Bengals defense has gotten after quarterbacks. The schemes, the disguises, I think the 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 pre-snap read from defense to offense has been elite. Their ability to use their guys to their highest, best use to get after the quarterback, it really it, it really impacts a quarterback when you don't know where that blitz is coming from because pre-snap, I think that Bengals defense does a really good job disguising the, the, the blitz route. I think they do a really good job fooling the quarterback's eyes, and I think that's a big difference in this game. And then when you have a quarterback, the caliber of Patrick Mahomes who can usually, you know, what do you want to say, override those disguises when this ankle's not 100% or not close to it, it makes it far more difficult, in my opinion, to overcome that ankle injury and overcome the skies, disguises. I think it's going to be very difficult for Kansas City to win this game. And I I do think Joe Burrow's going to, going to beat Patrick Mahomes at Arrowhead two years in a row. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that... that you know, maybe this is Burrow's time. I mean, maybe maybe it's his time to ascend to the best quarterback in the league and and start the you know legendary career. I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? And this is his his opportunity. And I think you know, going 
Obviously, going to the Super Bowl uh, and losing uh, does things for for quarterbacks. And I think if I'm Joe Burrow, I'm looking at this situation and I'm saying, "Hey, like you know, I got to get back. I got to I got to get a ring. I gotta I gotta start you know building that legacy and start building." you know, uh, just that legendary career. Because I agree with what people are saying that this guy is, is the next Tom Brady of the league. He plays like it. He leads like it. You know, he operates like it. And and I just feel like he has the it factor to go into a place like Arrowhead and win another game. I It, it just, it does not seem to phase them that they're on the road in Arrowhead. That doesn't seem to be a no. thing for this team. So to me... I'm looking at this and just saying, yeah, like I, I am going to pick the Bengals. I am going to to ride with Joe Burrow on this one. And if they lose, I'm okay with that because I know ultimately Joe Burrow is going to protect the ball. It's uh, it's it's unlikely that he would turn the ball over in this game. And and I just think that the guy is reliable as they come. So to me, I think you have to go with Cincy. But I, I understand if people are like, oh, it's at Arrowhead, you have to go Chiefs. Like I get that. Yeah, I don't, dude. I don't know, man. And and again, I I'm all for the Joe Burrow story is really good. I mean, the Joe Burrow story is, I mean, it's awfully difficult to to have a better story than Joe Burrow, right? But man, I'm telling you, I just don't believe that Patrick Mahomes can do it. I don't. I and, and I. I just like Joe Burrow. It's hard not to root for Joe Burrow. Yes. It and those wide receivers, that defense, like the the I think guys like Samaji P. Ryan, I think Joe Mixon, I think Jamar Chase, it like all of these guys, they're 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 easy to root for. They're good at their jobs. And Cincinnati never wins anything. Mm-hmm. How and I understand that Patrick Mahomes is very likable for some, but he just, I'm not a Patrick Mahomes guy. I think we've talked about that on this show. When you say that, like it's, you feel like it's hard to root for him or what? I, the whole persona thing really bugs the hell out of me. What like, do you mean it, by it, that? Like his, this is so irrelevant. I want you guys to understand this. It's so irrelevant. His wife annoys the hell out of me on, on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So I don't follow her. Like he's just, he feels like a strange guy. Like, he annoys me. Like, the whole... The guy on that team is Travis Kelsey. Mm -hmm. That's who I like. That's who I root for. But they're... They're just... It's Kansas City. What's what's the like about Kansas City? Oh, Chiefs Kingdom. We get it. Arrowhead's a great place to play, and I'm rooting for the Cincinnati Bears. Better send those refunds. I am rooting for Cincinnati. That's a great point. That's Joe Burrow mm-hmm. because those they had Chiefs and Bang or Chiefs and Bills in the AFC Championship game, and the NFL was selling tickets for that at a neutral site. Yeah, like screw you, man. Yeah. Nobody wants. It feels like nobody wanted Cincinnati. No, they didn't. So I'm they in didn't. on Cincinnati, dude. Like I, yeah. I'm here for it. I'm excited for it. Like the Cincinnati Bengals are what the Cleveland Browns should have been. Right? Like, let's be honest. The yeah, Cleveland dude. Browns should have been America's new team, and Baker Mayfield couldn't get the job done. Myself be damned. Right? Yeah. Like, he couldn't get the job done. And now I look at Joe Burrow. I look at T. Higgins. I look at Jamar Chase. I look at, you know, Taylor Britton at secondary. I look at, like, you look across yeah. this team and you're just like, damn, dude, like, they got all these guys and they're humble dudes and they're just working hard and doing their thing. Yeah, How I you not root for that. Listen, man, this is just again, this is just my opinion. How do you not root for that? And then there's Jalen Hurts <sighs> and the Philadelphia Eagles. And in my opinion, this is another dude that nobody wants to succeed. Mm-hmm. I don't think Eagles fans Eagles. want him to succeed. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it is incredible that the year that Jalen Hurts had, he is, in my opinion, I think a great candidate for an NFL MVP. I think what he's done in Philadelphia when nobody thought he could, Mm -hmm. that everybody rooted against him, that he's a quarterback, that he's black, I think absolutely plays part in this. I think Jalen Hurts is a great story. I'd love to see the Eagles with Jalen Hurts move on, but you're not beating that 49er defense. Mm -mm. And I understand the Eagles defense is no slouch. I understand that 
the, the wide receiver tandem in Philadelphia, unbelievable. Yeah. But I got news for you, man. That, <laughs> bro, that 49er defense is, is, Real. is just, they're unbelievable. And, and I think it is arguably one of the best defenses we've ever seen in the modern era of the NFL. Mm-hmm. In the last, certainly in the last decade, I think I can make an argument. It's one of the best defenses from, from Fred Warner, who everybody talks about to, you know, I think, I think Al Shire, I think Jimmy Ward, I think Greenlaw. I like the, there's dudes on yeah, this dudes defense. for days, not even Nick Bosa, not even Fred Warner. They're depth players like Lenore, like Arik Armstead, like, I mean, Tayshawn Gibson, I thought made several big plays, but then you throw in the fact that Jimmy Ward is a great blitzer and gets to the quarterback and absolutely impacted the football game last week. And Nick Bosa is almost impossible to block and you got to double team him, which makes it easier for other guys. Like their secondary, their corners blitz so well off the edge. Like you don't even, man, I'm t- that defense. And then the whole Brock Purdy story. Yep. I mean, you didn't know who Brock Purdy was two, three, four months ago. Yeah. I mean, you barely knew who he was a month ago. Yeah. And playing at the level that he's playing at. And, you know, the, the I understand, like, their injuries. I, I, like, Elijah Mitchell is your best running back right now. Stop it. Stop it. Christian McCaffrey, hurt again. Mm-hmm. Elijah Mitchell is your guy, man. Like, he is... At this moment here today, he's probably your number one option at running back because yeah. McCaffrey's got this calf. And again, CMC said yesterday, there's no way I'm not playing. I'm fine. Yeah, you're not fine. Nobody's fine this time of year. I get yeah, it. It's a, it's a matter of will you hold up? It's a matter That's of like, right. what, like even even for Patty Mahomes or, or McCaffrey or like any of these guys that have a legitimate injury, how well can the body hold up? That's the question. Huge question. And I think if you're the 49ers... You got to put Buddy on a pitch clock, and you got to use him in the highest leverage situations. Do not run him around that field a bunch of like. If I see, if I see even fifteen snaps out of McCaffrey in the first half, I'd be surprised. Wait, use him in the second half. I'm telling you, the second half in this playoff season has been the half. We're not seeing a lot of like. It's very rare that you see. 24, 28, 30 points in the first half, and the game's just over. You don't see that a lot. It is usually the second half. So here's my question. You played a good, solid defense against the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to Philadelphia. Yeah. You're going into an atmosphere at the link that is absolutely pressurized. And we all know the saying, pressure burst pipes. Mm Mm-hmm. You already coming off of a game against <coughs> Dallas where your top playmakers didn't make a lot a lot of plays. So I think now the question becomes, do we get big plays out of CMC? Do we get big plays out of Brandon Ayuk? Do we get Debo breaking off runs? Well, can they turn Hurts over too? Like from both sides of the ball, I think you, you're going to have to have those big runs, turnovers. Like you're going to have well, to cause chaos in this game. But listen, I think the defense, you don't worry about the Niner defense. If the Niner defense falls apart, well, damn. That was shocking. I'm questioning this 49ers offense, their ability to inflict themselves against this this Philadelphia defense. Because I don't think we talk enough about the Philadelphia defense. Mm -hmm. I I don't think we do. And I think when you you look at Philly, and again, I want people to understand, Philadelphia is a a two-and-a-half point favorite in this game. But look at the money lines in this game. It, the Niners are plus 122. This is going to be a really close game. This is good. this is a game that I think is in the 20s. And you're looking at, a, by the way, a 14-3 and three Philadelphia Eagles team. Yeah. And they absolutely dismantled the New York Giants. But the thing that you, you really don't begin to understand is the impact that <sighs> Hassan Reddick has had on that defense. That's right, T. You don't begin to understand... That guys like Fletcher Cox and Josh Sweat and this defense is good, dude. And I don't think people get that Hassan Reddick is on the quarterback two, three times a game. Yeah. If he's going to hit Brock Purdy two or three times, the 49ers are going to lose. 
There, you're not going to beat this Eagles defense with Brock Purdy under heavy pressure, even though I thought he handled it quite well uh, against Dallas. This is a different level of defense. Yeah. This is not at home. This is it in Philadelphia at the link. Um, this is, I think, a higher caliber defense. The Philadelphia defense is slightly better than Dallas, and their slightly better means that they get after you, dude. And they are, they are whether it's, you know, I don't know, Kayvon Wallace is a guy that comes to mind, Fletcher Cox, Reed Blankenship, like they get after you. They're physical around the football. Mm -hmm. And the thing that you worry about if you are the 49ers is the eight quarterback hits that Philadelphia had last week um, that, that again, Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham, nobody talks about Brandon Graham. Yeah. I'm telling you, Brandon Graham, br br hello, Brandon Graham is a disruptor when he is on. Yeah. And I, I just am, as sure as I am sitting here, I am telling you that when you get guys like CJ Gardner-Johnson and you put the ball in the air in a questionable position, those guys are going to be on the football. That's my that's my concern. That's why I'm picking the Eagles to win this game. Yeah, I mean, I I think that you know if you're the 49ers, you're trying to get Brock Purdy in rhythm early. You know, you want to get get him a couple of four or five yard completions. Just get him in the flow in his element early. Sure. I mean, that's like I think that's the for a guy like Purdy. Like I think that's what you have to do. I mean, he's not like Brock Purdy is not Jalen Hurts. He doesn't. You don't have like the 49ers don't have that inherent reliability of Joe Burrow like you don't have that so to me I think that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to lose the game but when we get down to it right this is Brock Purdy's chance to go up and step into true el elitism if you will or to say okay yeah you had a nice run but you're still a rookie you know this is the playoffs you 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 weren't ready you know and that's what I'm curious about does is the moment too big for this guy? And it hasn't been so far, right? It wasn't too big against Dallas. It wasn't yeah. too big against some of these other teams. But this just feels different. I mean, you, you're talking about going to Philly on what's supposed to be a high 40s day, partly yep. cloudy, deep, good weather. Like, you're talking about going on the road, outdoor stadium. Like, it. I don't know, man. It's just, it. we've never really seen anybody as a rookie do this. That's what's concerning. Yep, I agree. Totally agree. Let's get your thoughts in here. Our uh, in-house Philadelphia Eagles fan, Tanner Plummer, who is insufferable, mm -hmm. miserable to talk to about the Eagles. It's not that we Eagles fans want Jalen to fail, but, but it's just that we think his playing style isn't sustainable for the long term. No. So an elite thrower of the football and an elite runner of the football. What does that mean, his playing style? Because when you look at his comparables and you start to understand, he only threw the football 460 times. That's in the bottom half of starting quarterbacks in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But you also understand that he threw 22 touchdowns. 22 touchdowns in the top half of the NFL. You understand that he only had six interceptions, which is in the top half of the NFL. Uh, six, now, not 17. You look at a guy like Dak Prescott who threw 15 interceptions. Now, again, again, let's just say half of those hit a receiver in the hands because I think they did. So he threw seven or eight interceptions. Hell, let's call it 10 that are on him. He only threw the ball 394 times and he had 15 picks. So Jalen threw it far more than that. Like, I, I look at a guy like a, a, you know, I don't know, who threw it a lot? Kirk Cousins, 14 interceptions on, on 643 attempts. And he only had 29 touchdowns. Jalen threw, Jalen threw it 200 less times and had 22 touchdowns. Are you really telling me you don't believe that Jalen Hurts is a guy that, that can protect the football and throw the football well? Yeah. When you have guys like Ryan Tannehill who threw the same amount of interceptions and 140 less passes, are you telling me that a guy like Kyler Murray, a Lamar Jackson who threw seven interceptions on only 326 attempts? Come on now. What do you mean his style's not sustainable? Yeah. If you want to talk about getting hurt and running, okay, I'm fine with that. But that's who quarterbacks it feels like are becoming. Yeah. 
you have to run. Uh, I, I, I per- that's why, again, I'm such a, a fan of Justin Herbert because Justin Herbert's not a guy that you have to worry about running all over the place. He runs for effect. Right. That's why he runs. And you look at, you look at Justin Herbert, 699 attempts, 10 interceptions, 25 touchdowns. Without great receiving it's an talent. insane number. 699 attempts. With 10 interceptions. Number two in the NFL. The only guy with more uh, uh, throwing attempts was Tom. Tommy. Tommy. 733 on nine interceptions. <laughs> I mean, the, you guys, Jalen Hurts is a capable quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Fat Jesus says 49ers will have no problem with Hurts. Uh, look at what they did with Kyler Murray. Uh, I think you're underselling it, too. I think you're the, underselling Hurts, man. The issue is you have to actually cover against Jalen Hurts because he can throw the ball. Yeah. He can throw the yeah, football. Hurts is, Hurts is by far superior to Kyler. I think Kyler Murray's biggest issue is he can't keep his eyes downfield because he panics under pressure. Yeah. It's his biggest issue, in my opinion. Brother! Says I know the 49ers are uh, the I know the 49ers 12 and 0 un, uh, unbeatable team, but can the Eagles um, will win and take away their undefeated streak against Purdy? So I'll take the 49ers because of that machine of defense. Yeah, my problem with Philly's defense is that DC Jonathan Gannon is a complete idiot, insufferable to talk Eagles football. Guy, they're the best defense in the NFL, and he's a complete idiot. Like, do you hear the things that you say? No. Uh, Mapes says Dallas D was top five D as well. Philly struggles covering over the middle and QBs who don't get the uh, the the ball out fast. What do the Niners do well? Well, I think the Niners offensively, what they do well is they can spread the field. They have a they have a number of issues. They don't need to attack the perimeter deep. When you have George Kittle, they attack the middle of the field quite well. They have misdirection and offset that allows guys like Debo Samuel to be running in the opposite direction of the defensive flow. Mm -hmm. And they do it at an elite level. So that could be absolutely. Can I says fat Jesus? I think hurts is better than, uh, better than the baby Kyler. I would agree with that. (laughs) You know, you know, uh, Mont Kavan Wallace sucks to say he's good is a casual take. I didn't say he was good. What I said was, collectively that defense <laughs> is the best defense in the NFL. And when you get the pressure, they get up front. He doesn't have to be elite, you know? And again, here's the problem. Stop saying, Hey, this guy in the NBA sucks. This guy in the NFL suck. You don't play at the N- in the NFL and suck. <laughs> it, it, you're killing me. You're killing me, man. Eagles linebackers can't cover worth crap. Okay. Do you say anything positive about the Eagles? No, never. I'm, I'm just curious. Like uh, Kyler McIntosh. All I know is Joe Shiesty and the Bengals are the only thing saving us from watching Jackson Mahomes twerk in the Super Bowl. Looking forward to a Purdy Shiesty Super Bowl. Yeah. It'd be nice if we did not have to see the Mahomes family. I agree with that. I totally agree with that. Giggity says, can we ban Tanner from talking Eagles? Oh, we, <laughs> we probably should. <laughs> Like you, you just, at some point, you have to take your emotions out of your, your favorite teams. If you've learned anything from me, when do I ever get really emotional about anybody but the Cubs? Well, and the Bears. I mean, come on. Right, and the Bears. I mean, they're building a, a, you know, a stadium on piles of crap. Of like, horse manure. Come on. Come they, on. they got a plan from the city of Chicago to build a palace at Soldier Field. They said, nah, we're focused on <coughs> Arlington Park. <coughs> I'm not emotional about the Bears. I'm very matter of fact. I'm emotional about the Cubs. I I a little a little bit about Notre Dame, but really I'm pretty matter of fact because that's not a good football I'm just team. Asking, but you know. you're the Chicago Bears. How are you leaving the lakefront? Thank you. Uh, like, Mape says I I love San Francisco Cincy in uh, three in the Super Bowl. I mean that'd be a hell of a matchup. Yeah. I, I I'm all here for I the NFC. I just think the Eagles are slightly better. These two teams are so even. This is going to be 24-21. This is going to be 27-24. That's why this is That's why this, this is the season. Yeah. This is what we live for as football fans, man. Yeah. You know, I, I just, you know. 
Kurt Meyer says, uh, Tanner, go with my friend. You have been a Eagles uh, homeboy all year. Hertz is the real deal. He, he like is. that's the amazing thing. We're sitting here praising the Eagles, and it's still not good enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're oh. sitting here saying positive things. Jamar, uh, Alex Chacon, you don't play in the NFL and suck. Tell that to Jamarcus Russell. Please. The purple drink. Did Jamarcus? Do you guys know Jamarcus Russell used to sit his fat ass at the fifty yard line and wrist flick the ball into the end zone? I saw that with my own two eyes at practice in Alameda. He would sit at the 50-yard line and not have to like wind up. He would just swoop, and that ball, zing, into the end zone. 